Hello, and welcome to Redemption Plus You, an educational conversation designed to maximize your redemption program. I'm Megan Birch, Merchandising Manager at Redemption Plus, and today I am partnering with three operators to discuss a hot topic, inventory management. These three come from well-renowned locations and one even won FEC of the world from IAPA. So they have a lot of great redemption knowledge and I am excited to pick their brains. So I am pleased to introduce Abby Brenneman from Pizza Ranch, Tyler Johnson from Wild Island, and Chris Martin from Andretti Indoor Karting and Games. Hi guys, welcome, thank you for joining me. Hi, how are you? Hello. Hi. So before we get started, let's just take a quick second and get to know one another. So let's start out with you, Abby. All right. Well, I'm Abby Brenneman. Um, I live in the St. Louis area. We're in the suburbs. Uh, we run two pizza ranches, which is a pizza and chicken buffet, but we also have an arcade on both of our locations. Um, we've been open for about four and a half years now, and i um, so excited to be uh, partnering with Redemption Plus throughout those four and a half years. Thank you. We, we enjoy working with you very much. All right, Tyler. Hello, my name is Tyler. I'm an operations manager at Wild Island Coconut Bowl. We're located in Sparks, Nevada. Been open since 2003. We have go-karts, laser tag, indoor outdoor mini golf, and of course a huge arcade and a redemption store. All right, thank you. And Chris? I'm from uh, Andretti Indoor Karting Games, like you said. I'm from uh, Dallas, the Dallas area. I do, um, I'm the senior amusement manager for the Western region. Um, so I take care of our uh, Houston and um, San Antonio locations as well. Um, we've been open for, I think it's somewhere around 20 years. Um, I've been with the company for just over three. Uh, been really enjoyable time. And you are about to get some new stores coming on into your region as well, huh? Yes, yes. Got two more in Fort Worth and, uh, or sorry, one in Fort Worth and one in Grand Prairie. It's pretty exciting. Got a yes. big deal. You guys are growing really fast. Yes. Okay, well, let's talk about inventory. So this is something we receive a lot of questions on. A lot of people struggle with this topic and I just want to pick your brains and see kind of what great ideas you guys have. So the first thing we'll talk about is inventory value. How do you determine a target inventory value? Is it done by a percentage of sales? Is it year over year revenue or something else completely? Uh, Chris, you want to start off? Um, I determine my inventory value based on six weeks of total game sales. Um, and I usually stick around between the five to 7% mark uh, to keep on hand, to keep the wall uh, full and the uh, back stock available for the attendance oh. to use. So five to 7% of that of, six week. Of the six sale. week game sales, yes. Yep. I gotcha. Yep. And that, so that tends to be a pretty good number for you. Do you ever have to flex up or flex down? Uh, during during holiday season, I flex up just a little bit, uh, right around, I'd say I probably max around 10% okay. of the total six-week uh, revenue for the game sales. Um, and that allows, like I said, the back stock to be full, um, as well as the, the wall. We have a quite a large wall here, um, as, as opposed to a store. So it does take you know a good amount of product to keep it full. So you have uh, essentially a, a counter, but it's a very large counter, um, yeah. probably about double double in size of a traditional counter, and you kind of mirror the wall on on two sections there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we do we do the same setup on both sides, mirrored, as you said. Um, so it it does take a good amount of SKUs there. I take about 120 SKUs, I think I got it right now. So okay, mm -hmm. very good. What about you, Abby? How do you determine your inventory value? Well, I um, had to learn all this on my own. And so I am very much a site person. So I just make sure everything up front is full and then I have a good stock in the back. So I just know what our counter or what our container should look like in the back, um, whether it's the boxes or whatever. And I just make sure I have that well stocked. So I don't have a good solution and for everyone else, but I just, I'm a site person, so. 
Sure. I mean, you can you can walk into your site and look and see, okay, well, this section is empty or these shelves here are empty and I know I need to have that to be full to operate where where I need to be. Right. Yes, correct. What about you, Tyler? Uh, so our target inventory value is determined by a combination of our year over year sales and our cost of goods. So at the beginning of the year, when I'm coming up with our budgeting goals, I'll look at our previous years, first, second, third, or fourth quarter, uh, look at what our cost of goods was then. And let's say my goal for the new year is to decrease our cost of goods by 2%. I would decrease those one those numbers by 2% and come up with a dollar value that way for my budget. Um, obviously it's not exactly accurate just because our revenue is never gonna stay the same but it sure. gives me a good idea of where I can start. Uh, and depending on how our quarter is going, I can increase or decrease our inventory value that way. Um, but to be honest, a lot of it is also uh, the same as Abby. It's what, if it's empty, I buy it. <laughs> <laughs> that is something that redemption seems to be full of is the art and the science. So mm -hmm. you, you gotta have some of the data as well as some of that look and feel that you just can't get from a computer, from your exactly. reports. That's yeah, very true, nice. yeah. Oh yeah, it's nice to have those numbers just to fall back on, but at the end of the day, you know, if I see something low, I buy it. That's that's very true. I, I did leave that part out. I do tend to <laughs> walk in the back and it's just kind of, we, we go based off of our actual sales like for the past week, but we also just actually go back and look at what we have in back stock and things. So yes, that's yeah. a very good way. And I would imagine you would all agree with the sentiment that it's Im more important to have, you'd rather have too much than not enough. Correct. Most, yes. most of the stuff won't go bad. I mean, candy will expire, but not in the short amount of time that, you know, if, if you buy a case or, or whatnot. So you'd always rather have more on hand than exactly. to be running out. Yes. And then Tyler, to your point, you, you know, you said it fluctuates kind of throughout the year so when you when you create that budget is it kind of for that quarter so you have you know x amount to spend for the quarter and then you can kind of look and see how it's fluctuating yes we do it based on quarter so i'll have those numbers numbers set for each quarter at the beginning of the year when i'm coming up with my budget uh but as the quarter progresses i can increase or decrease that value very easily if i see something's empty and i'm at my budget i'm not just gonna not buy it you know so i might i right. might go over the previous year's quarter or i might go under which is the goal but uh it's just whatever it takes to really make the store look good yep uh you always want that store looking nice and full mm -hmm. and not picked over yes exactly Okay, well, let's kind of move on to another really hot topic, physical inventory. So how often do you conduct the physical inventory and what do you do to prepare for it? Tyler, let's kick off with you. Uh, yeah, so our goal is to do it quarterly. Um, so to prepare for it, I go to the back end of our redemption system and just find a stock summary report. I'll export it to Excel and then divide uh, each prize by section. Uh, once that's done, I'll assign one section for one of my team members each week so that it's not overwhelming. And we'll get through our inventory basically slowly but surely. So week by week we do it. So you're kind of doing like a rolling schedule throughout the quarter where you can get the section this week and next week we're going to do this one. Yeah, exactly. I found that's a little bit more uh, manageable for us. Um, do you find it easy to kind of, when you come across discrepancies, is that something that's easy to address when you're doing it in such small chunks? Exactly. Yeah. When we see discrepancies, it's, I mean, it's easier to uh, sort those out when you're just doing inventory in general consistently. Uh, but since we're doing it week by week, it's just the same. Yeah, anytime we see a discrepancy, we can fix it. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about you, Chris? Uh, we do a, a physical inventory every two weeks. So we count back stock and the wall every two weeks. Um, we prepare by um, doing the same type of thing. We go in the back end and we uh, find 
negative numbers. Sometimes there's, you know, uh, it shows a negative number before you go to count. Um, we put those to zero and then anything that was, is actually out of stock, like that shows zero, we do end up um, removing that from the list. Basically we call it retiring that product. Um, so that will shorten the list a little bit. Um, but mine's actually set up where it's goes by shelf in the back. So it'll be like at a number one through four and it's supposed to be shelf to sheet. So you look on the shelf and you, and your product that's on your shelf should match the sheet location. Um, so it's, it's easier to not miss stuff. It still happens, um, from time to time, but it's, it's a lot less frequent than when it's just one big list. So, so I find that helpful. So kind of like Tyler, but in a little bit different way, she's doing different sections on weekly. You're breaking yours up into small little chunks, little sections to count each of those. Yes. Yeah. And we do it every two weeks. So it'll be, so the back is, is different than the front a little bit. Um, sure. but we, go based off, our, uh, off of our planogram sections that we have. Um, so different categories of, of product. And so those two items are used, uh, like I guess one's for the back stock and one will be for my for my front counter area. Okay, that's mm -hmm. smart. The, the breaking into little chunks seems to be mm -hmm. a common thread so far. Yep. What about you, Abby? Well, first of all, Chris, I'm a little jealous. If you can do it shelf to sheet, um, I haven't figured that one out yet. So <laughs> I'm going to try and see what I can learn from you here on that one. Um, but we do it monthly. However, we have done a little bit where um, it's kind of like every two weeks we're doing something. So we've kind of broken up to the where the bins are one week and then maybe the next week or depending on if it's my, me or my daughter doing it, um, what works for us. But like, so we're basically doing it two different weeks in the month. Um, but doing the bins one week and the wall the next week. So, so and again, pizza, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Pizza ranches have a uh, very large bin section. So you've got 36 bins and then the new store has 48 bins, correct? Correct. Correct. So that's, that's a lot to count at once. And then you're going to have a counter behind that um, where Tyler has a room. So all three of you have kind of vastly different setups. So that makes a lot of sense to try to tackle it in kind of two different sections there yeah my di the difference between what i do and what they're doing is uh, ours is actually have, has to be counted that day so like wednesday evening before the actual count we pre-count the back stock but then on thursday we have to finish the count completely and it's done every two weeks so it's it's quite the task but um all these little things seem to help uh speed up the process um, one big thing with the bins is the scale helps a lot um, for sure. Don't, you know, don't physically count all that little stuff. Um, it's the, we focus on the discrepancies on the bigger items, you know, the bigger value things. Sure. If you're short, you know, five Tootsie Rolls, that doesn't necessarily mean anything versus being short six lava lamps. You know, Correct. it's a big difference in, in inventory value there. Correct. Correct. Um, as you guys are preparing for the inventory, um, you mentioned a couple things. Are there any other uh, big steps that you take like in the week or two weeks leading up to the inventory? I guess in Chris's case, every two weeks is leading up to the inventory. But do you have any specific tasks that you go through or a checklist that you go through before you do the inventory itself? I mean, um, for us, it's just making sure it's completely stocked up front. So we go through our back and just completely fill it as full as we can get it. Um, that way the front looks full. So if we're working in the back, um, we're not, we can do that while guests are still there if need be. Um, so a lot of times we'll do it um, at the end of the day, we'll do the back, our back room. And then after guests leave, then we'll do the front room, but or the front section of it. So um, again, just stocking it that fullest as you can in the front. That makes yeah, a lot of sense. Say, sorry, I was going to say I agree. Yeah, I would. I couldn't think of anything, but yeah, exactly. I would uh, restock the front as much as possible just so that way once guests leave, we can count the front. Um, I was also going to mention being organized obviously is a huge deal uh, when it comes to inventory. It's going to make it more efficient. Uh, but we typically don't have to prepare for that just because our, our team is very good. So everything typically stays pretty organized before inventory. 
You have one of the most organized stock rooms I have seen in my whole life. Thank and you. I've seen a lot of stock rooms. Thank you. Um, her team, they are super, super organized. Yeah, they're great. They do really good. So I think the other thing is having your room organized as well as you can. Um, because we have two locations, one of ours is smaller than the other. So our larger one's a lot easier because everything is kind of in the back room is the same as it is out front. So if it's on an upper on the wall, then it's on one of the upper shelves on the in the back. Um, and so it, it kind of goes down. So at least it's easier to kind of count both of them because you know where the spots are. And our smaller location in Winsville, I have to move things around to make them fit on the shelves, especially if we change out an, uh, an item. And sometimes those items don't fit on the same shelf that the new one did. So it's a little bit harder with a smaller space, but the bigger space I love having because it's it's so much easier to, again, know where everything is. So if you can do that, that was, I love that in our new location. So kind of mapping the back storage area to match with your right. sales floor. Yes. Chris, yes. do you do something similar? Yes, and that goes back to the shelf labels and the uh, categories of the stuff on the wall. Make They match up. So for example, your section on the front wall is action gear, and then you would go into your back stock and action gear is all stored in this one section. And on, on like C3 or whatever the, that is oh. labeled, right? So we have, <laughs> we, have, we have actual like shelf labels like that. Fantastic. Uh, to try to help with it, it goes back to training too, because it's easier to train the new the new folks on it and how to use it. Um, so. Sure, I mean having those things clearly laid out and labeled, and letting the staff know these go here. This is this thing's home. It, it makes it easier for them to do their job too, which means you don't have to go back behind and do their job for them. Absolutely. And it helps with if you're if you're not there, you know that your team is able to execute for you and get it done and and so it doesn't get disorganized on you so yeah. that's fantastic mm -hmm. so let's talk about inventory discrepancies so how do you guys well we'll we'll do a couple small little questions within here but how do you handle damaged items that you find uh you know kind of just on the wall or in your bins or you know just random damaged items here and there um, uh, Oh, so we take care of those daily. So anytime one of my team members is working, they know, well, we have a bin that we put aside where it's full of broken prizes. So anytime something is broken, it goes into that bin and then that stock gets updated daily. Well, I probably do that once a, once a week, maybe every two weeks or so, right before inventory. We do it once a month right before inventory. Yeah. Pretty common theme. So we set up a little tote or, or tub and yeah. just kind of collect those things throughout your time period and then update it in the uh, inventory system. Yes. That makes sense. So what about when you um, receive your inventory, when you receive your shipment, um, do you physically count everything in? Yes, yes. We go based off of the um, packing slip. If sometimes okay. you can't find the packing slip, you go based off of your order uh, from the online because it's obviously easier to find the online one sometimes, you know. Sure. Uh, so we we do that, um, the, and the team members are really good. The one that about letting us know if something is missing, and so we make those adjustments until we either receive it later on, you know, FedEx or whatever uh, delays, and and if we don't, then you know, it's, it's taken it's care of it. otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Abby or Tyler, any other ideas or thoughts on that? No, that's my goal. It doesn't happen every time, but that is my goal to do it every time it comes in. So, but I usually know what I ordered. So I usually, especially if something's major missing, we know, um, I'm sure there's something I've messed up at some point in time, but ideally you do want to do it, you know, every single time because there are issues that things get lost or you don't get. So um, highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, I, I agree with Abby. It's definitely ideal to be able to do it physically when it comes in. And I've been doing that more recently, but typically in the past, I just go off the order and update the inventory that way. So 
we might have just answered that question, but I'm going to ask anyway, what is your biggest struggle when it comes to inventory management? Abby, you want to kick us off? <laughs> Um, well, when people, when, when there's sales that are happening and I might buy a, a little bit too much, and then you have to figure out where to store those things, hence IAPA. Um, but <laughs> I think just, just finding the time to actually, or making, making the time to actually, um, focus on it and get it done. I think sometimes it's, we just put it in a spot and it's like, we'll get to it when we get to it. Um, maybe not that day, but a couple of days later. So it's not like we're leaving it forever, but I think it's, it's making it a priority, checking the slips and, um, uh, making sure you got it and then getting it where it needs to be right away. So everybody has access to it. Um, they're not calling or saying, Hey, where's this, where's that it's, it's put away right away. Yeah, if, if you let things kind of sit and wait, then things can easily get lost in the mix and who knows how long that box has been sitting here and so on and so forth. Correct. Yeah. Or you order too much because you can't find it and now you have more of those and now you're sitting on more inventory. So mm -hmm. not that I've ever done that before. <laughs> no, no, of course not. <laughs> what about you, Chris? What's your biggest struggle? Um, I mean, it's just making sure that everybody that's involved in the inventory and the process knows what's going on. That's kind of like the biggest struggle is just making sure that I dedicate the time to make sure that, you know, the correct people are in place uh, for when I get my orders. Um, it's been really good for the last, like, you know, I'd say year and a half, two years, but it was, it was a, a big struggle before that um, with no structure in place, it can be a very big struggle. Yes. So do you have designated team members that you prefer to be there when the shipment's received? Um, if it's not myself or the assistant amusement manager, um, it's normally our team leaders, like our team leads in the, in the arcade um, or a supervisor of the arcade. Um, we typically don't have our hourly team members in there other than the team leads, obviously. Um, so it, it's specific people. Yes. Okay. So that you have a good group that's been trained and you kind of know. know the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Tyler, I know you kind of operate the same. You typically try to schedule the same couple of people to receive that inventory. Correct? Yeah, exactly. And I, I would say when it comes to our biggest struggle, it's not necessarily when the shipments come in. Um, but it, it was more really finding a system that works for us. Uh, for a while, we were trying to conduct a physical inventory more in a traditional sense when you think of inventory. So your entire team coming in and counting every single item that you have, and it just wasn't working for us uh, just because of the amount of back stock that we have. We're very lucky to have such a large storage space, but it comes with a lot of difficulties when you have so much back stock. You end up <laughs> with so many prizes and it's hard to count for just one person. And on top of that, a lot of my team members are in college, they're ones in high school. So it was really difficult to find a time where we could all be together and count the inventory together. Um, so it was just kind of finding a system that worked for us was a big struggle. That's something, I mean, every location is different. Exactly. Every, every business operates different. So, you know, what works for Chris might not work for Abby and, and works for you, Tyler. So I think that's probably a really big takeaway is just tailoring um, your, your inventory process to your business and doing what works best for you. Yes, exactly. So I do have a question, Megan, if I can ask. Please um, do. So how many, so we, I just have myself and one of my, my daughter um, does inventory. So we're the only ones that take care of it. So I'm kind of curious, and it takes us a total of 10 man hours approximately to do that. So I know that's been a lot of questions I've had with other people. So can I ask Tyler and Chris, um, how many people have you had involved in inventory and about how many man hours does it take you to do it? Um, I would say for me, I have myself, and then two other people usually that help with inventory, maybe three if I ask nicely. Yeah. And those three people will help with inventory to do our entire section or our entire store probably be about 10 hours each. So maybe like 
for 40 hours. Yeah, we do the entire inventory. So it's just a little bit less overwhelming when you break it up by section for us. Yeah. Um, we do, let's see, we have three people for when we count the counter. Um, so one's going to be entering in the computer while the other two are counting each section and calling out the numbers. And then uh, for the back stock, I usually have one or two people and that's so the storage room's probably about a two to three hour process, depending on how much product is back there. Um, and then the counter is probably about a two to three hour process. And that's done every two weeks. So you're looking at potentially six hours times four people? Yes. So about 24 labor hours per. For every uh, two weeks. Cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that's a fantastic question. Thank you, Abby. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Because some people I know think that it should it shouldn't take that long, or they're like we it seems like it takes a long time or whatever. So um, yeah. I kind of know what it did for us. So it was kind of interesting to know what that my number is it that ridiculous, right? Yeah, it, no. it usually takes. <laughs> Not at all. And I mean, Tyler's store is huge, and she has two storage areas. Chris, you would kill for her storage space. <laughs> um, really so just I mean just counting your the big back room the one that's upstairs yeah. is probably takes more time just for that space than it would for everything the else. two of you to, to yeah. do your whole areas so she's very lucky to have that space <laughs> yeah i know very lucky and it's big enough to where we can organize everything too pretty nicely and it's, it makes it just more efficient that's awesome mm -hmm. Well, my uh, my last question here, and it's kind of a big one. What is your biggest piece of advice for other operators when it comes to inventory management? Uh, Tyler, you want to start? Yeah, uh, so I mentioned this in my like blurb for the newsletter as well, and it goes back to us as well, but it's finding something that works best for your store. Uh, to start off, I will say organization is going to be key, and I think that's something that any store, no matter your business or your teamwork or your team members or anything like that, you're going to be able to stay organized, um, no matter your storage space. But other than that, yeah, finding what works best for you, you know, just listing out the pros and cons of your store, uh, looking at what you do well at and how you can capitalize on that, as well as looking at the disadvantages that you have and how you can kind of work around those. But I think it's hyper specific to every store, every store. Yeah. Abby. Well, I think it's having your designated team, right? So if it's one or one or two people that know a lot about it um, and not getting too many hands in the pot, because when you get too many people doing it or trying to take control of it, um, then it's hard to know what those discrepancies are. Um, because if people are in there and constantly changing it in the system because they found something, then it's the next person may not understand why it's off or what's going on. So I think it's kind of just keeping that one or two main people, but yet being able to pull in some other people at times to help do the actual counting and that kind of stuff. Um, one thing that I would think with having that designated team and your designated time is having that team scheduled only to do inventory, right? So instead of, you know, I'm helping count, but now I got to go run and make a pizza. That's, not right. helping the situation right all yeah, right what about i was going to say sorry i was going to say that it's take the time to count the inventory and do it correct because it it saves a huge headache in the long run yeah so yes it to... takes a lot of man hours but at the end of the day it's going to save you in the at, like in costs and everything else down the road when you finally find that discrepancy and it's, you know, it can be costly. So mm -hmm. definitely take the time. And all three of you run very high volume locations too. So you're all going through a ton of inventory. Yeah. And I think make sure you do it on a, a regular basis. So whether it's two weeks, four weeks, you know, quarterly, um, I would probably suggest doing it more often than quarterly for a lot of the people um just because there are some things like we're finding something in one of our locations now that there's some things happening and we're trying to figure out if it's a team member error of you know are they not finalizing a transaction 
And so it's not pulling off of our inventory or is it somebody stealing or that kind of stuff. So if we do it, if we wait too long, then, you know, you can't find those. It's, it's too late. So, you know, keeping track of, there's a reason why the inventory is off. So trying to figure out what that is. Um, yep. And we're in the process of, again, trying to figure one of those out right now. So. Yeah, you've got to really dig deep and, and get meticulous into some of those things. But like you said, if you wait too long, you know, then it just becomes that that box sitting there of just random stuff. And like, what's going on here? We, we don't know. This was, you know, four months ago. I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, I feel like I have learned a lot from the three of you. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today and talk about inventory. Um, and thank you all for watching. Um, we've, we've heard some great tips and I'm hopeful that this will be helpful. Uh, this has been Redemption Plus You. Bye-bye. <laughs>